what is the mind frame of say an indian family when it comes to money not education yeah money money yeah interesting like my father drives a pro box yeah but he has uh, a v8 in his parking lot mm-hmm. but like in hotel mono ko to me baba sisters za cho cement yani gari yake usipoingia na uko watu unaengara unaenda mahali usipande gari yako mzee utatoka kama mzee ametoka mzee i'm funny i'm funny i'm hilarious What's up guys my name is Sebastian and I just want to officially welcome you to the Kenyan Entrepreneur your number one channel on matters of entrepreneurship and lifestyle. Today we have another segment of young entrepreneurs and we are very lucky to be hosting one of the top scriptwriters in Kenya. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Okay. Just make sure I'm talking about the right thing. I'll let you introduce yourself and maybe you can tell us how you see yourself. Uh I'm Safina Iqbal and I'm a very good writer. Oh, not <laughs> <laughs> Are you disputing the fact that you are among the best script writers? In- no, who would dispute that? It's because you of how you reacted. <laughs> anyway, just to get straight into it, maybe before we focus on the storytelling aspect that is script writing, maybe you can tell us who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it for. I know it's a layered question, but I know you can navigate can. through it. Yeah, so I'm Safina. Okay. Um how long I'm a writer? I had in fact as a writer but I started actually as an actress. Okay. But then I think the long lines in KND for auditions I realized <laughs> hmm, <laughs> why not just write. Yeah. Um so I've been doing it for I think I started it when I was in second year of med school. Mm-hmm. Um so I've been doing it for probably over 10 years now. Okay. Yes. Um So primarily that's what I do as a passion. Mm-hmm. Professionally I'm a nurse. Um ER nurse currently doing my masters in critical care. But I think of late I am more I have focused more on my writing versus the uh, the previous now 9 years. Yeah. I think over the last 2 years I have focused more on writing. Okay, so You mentioned med school and the next question I wanted to ask is what is your focus and then you said nursing and yeah. then critical care so you work in the ER that yes. is even before we talk about uh, storytelling or maybe you can say this as part of a story okay. what is the one thing that maybe scared you or sort of gave you that job to actually tell you you are working in an ER the job yeah Um so ER for me is interesting so okay. I wouldn't use the word scary but the one thing I think that stands out for me is in all my ER experience is I had to resuscitate my own uncle so I think for me that day I was like <laughs> cuz it was night shift and we were just two yeah and the other nurse was kind of new So how where I used to work the bell rings you don't yeah. know what's at on the other end mm. of that bell it's just a very loud ringing sound that just that stops when you open the door mm-hmm. so i remember it was just a chill night and the bell rang obviously i told the other nurse go check it out because i think i was doing something else and then he came back <laughs> running yeah. so He was like come help so when i went it was my uncle as of course you have to yeah. rethink because it was either me or him mm-hmm. to do the resuscitation so i had to do it myself i think that's when i think i realized is it this thing we tell each other as nurses you have to treat people nicely because you don't know when someone you know will walk through those doors yeah. so for me that was a reality i think that's when i discovered I was in the air. Everything else is funny. I've had <laughs> I've had people bring me legs in paper bags and you're like then it becomes a joke we pass it around. <laughs> We're like kuna yungu zigango nimeacha hapo. I bwendo ni so feel the hell. So you develop that humor. Yeah. But I think that that was it for me. Is it a coping mechanism or what? Yeah. Because I know seeing someone's leg in a bag is traumatizing in itself. It's funny. It's <laughs> on how you look at it, but yeah. I think after a while you see so many things, you have to cope because mm-hmm. you keep seeing it. Yeah. Um I think there's this time 
there's a lady who was run over by a train. Mm-hmm. As I said, you don't know what's on the other side of the... The bell. So I used to work in Mombasa, and most emergencies weirdly were brought by tuk-tuks. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear that tuk-tuk-tuk-tuk, <laughs> like, oh my God, I really hope this is just... Something so you go to the like tuk-tuk, and you don't even know how... The whole tuk-tuk is bloody. There are no legs. It's like minced meat. Mm. So we went back. Uzuri, I was with my friend. Yeah. You know, you have friends at mm-hmm. work. So we went back, closed the door first. You take it in. in <laughs> then walked out. Yeah. But after a while, you get used to it. Because at the end of the day, you're what is standing between them seeing their Another loved ones day again. Of, yeah. Yeah. So you have to like put your feelings aside and we'll go deal with them later. Mm-hmm. I think that's how we develop that humor. It must take a lot of mental strength it drains to develop you. that. Yeah, it drains you actually, because after a while, one you become very insensitive <laughs> to things. <laughs> Sebastian yeah. would fall here and I would look at you. Mm-hmm. Come on, can be worse. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, it drains you mentally. So I think for me, my outlet is writing, mm. and you'll see a lot of my medicine and aspects of my nursing in my writing. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a, a script, just to sort of hoop okay. forward before you come back again. Right. There's a script of that you did that had a lot of that. Yeah. Maybe you can talk about that. Frontliner? Yeah. Um, so why I wrote Frontliner is because most of my friends are Frontliners, one, mm. most of my circle. Yeah. So I remember the night I wrote Frontliner is because my friend was sleeping in her car because <laughs> she couldn't go home because mm. um, uh, she ha- she's a cardiac nurse. Yeah. And whoever, and cardiac nurses, she was doing an emergency, we call it stenting, when you have a heart attack. So we, she couldn't wait for the results because the results take a day. Yeah. A heart attack kills you in less than 40 minutes. So they had to do the procedure, knowing fully well that this patient might have COVID. Yeah. So when the results came, she couldn't go home. She had to stay in the car. So she did. She didn't want to expose uh, her family. Yeah. So we were talking, and she's in the car. She's telling me, "I'm just eating from the car. I'm sleeping in the car." So I thought it's easy to just call people frontliners, <laughs> which is fancy. Yeah. But those are the people who really take the tail end of it yeah. um, so I think it was also around the same time people are relaxing you see people are not wearing masks mm-hmm. people are just flaunting and you're like there are people who are sleeping in their cars I had a friend who stayed in the hospital 45 days and Whoa. he kept retesting positive positive he was in the same uh, cardiac unit mm-hmm. so he stayed in the hospital for 45 days yeah so that's why I wrote it, because it distorts your family unit, mm-hmm. Kabisa. And that's why Frontliner for me made sense. Um, I wrote it for competition. Yeah. So my, my cut was five minutes, but the whole cut is 13 minutes. The one that gives you the full picture. Yeah. Um, so I didn't feel like the, the competition cut uh, did the story any justice one <laughs> <laughs> but it had to be done yeah. but that's why i wrote it because i felt like it's all fancy and nice call people essential services but they're the ones who bear the brunt for mm. everything you do or mm. don't do yeah. yeah going back to that uncle story mm-hmm. where you had to resuscitate him i'm very big on family by the way yeah and maybe because of that, I'm very much inclined to ask you of no. your family and your upbringing, why you decided to go to med school, yeah. and then the transition to... I'm Indian, script. I was forced. <laughs> <laughs> it was that or they had that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you choose one of those. No, so um, why... why I always Actually, I wanted to join the army. Mm. Um, that was my initial want. Um, but I listened to people, so I wanted then to become a gynecologist, which is weird because I can't stand maternity right now. Um, then towards towards the end of my, f- was it? Uh, form four. Mm-hmm. 
So this is like TMI. So my my dad had a heart attack around the same time. Yeah. So I couldn't go to school a lot. So I couldn't get my A, but I got an A minus. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was big on grades. Yeah. No, academics are a part, a very big chunk of my identity. So I couldn't. Just, I didn't get the points for medicine. So I thought ah, I was mad. I was like, you know, let me go do nursing. It's probably easier. Mm. Shock on me. <laughs> just not. So that's when I did the degree in nursing. Yeah. Um. So that's. I think I did it because it was what I thought I would naturally do. Because I was like, uh, I liked. I was good in school. So I did nursing because I couldn't get into medicine. But towards during nursing, I was like, you know what? I'm actually very good at it. Yeah. Um. So I think that's why there's no like fantastic story. But in my second year, that's when now I started. M- so primary school, high school, I was very good at writing drama. I used to write for the drama festivals for my high school. I never really thought about it. I thought I was just doing it for mm-hmm. clout. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> a bonga points is a funky. Because on a trip, so go up. Ah, I mean, don't look at your man. I'm going to talk. I don't get gas to Yeah. That's it. I think I, I never really thought about it. So when I thought I can be an actress, then figured, uh, not really. I figured I, I actually know how to write. So mm. that's when I started. I actually started writing my scripts on Microsoft Word. <laughs> which thinking back is very embarrassing. For for those of us who don't know how mm. scripting is done, yeah. I, even just before you said it, I thought it, that, that is how it's written. <laughs> even I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how are scripts written? Uh, just like, like a sidebar. Because like a still, sidebar. If yeah. you're writing a script, um, there, there are apps that make it easier, software. So there's mm. Celtic, there's Fast Draft. Okay. Yeah. So that's what professional script writers do. So if mm. you're writing on what you're... How much? How much? I'm on Andy Kia Drama Club. I'm on Andy Kia Drama Club. <laughs> drama Club, I, by the way, I find it easier to write on paper. Mm-hmm. Weirdly, when I type, I lose. So you'll find me normally yeah. write fast. Okay. Yeah. So going back to your family, can you mm-hmm. talk about your family? Mm, pretty much. <laughs> I've always had this fascination of Indians and money. <laughs> and I know it's an unorthodox <laughs> mind frame or I know we are we are no, sort of no, all no, over the okay. place but mm-hmm. I have to ask I've mm-hmm. asked um, okay so here's my thinking mm. I think Indians and Somalis and Kikuyus are very good with money mm. so I've made it my personal calling to understand what the mindset is mm-hmm. for, for money on money, money from okay. this communities mm-hmm. just again as another sidebar we are gonna okay. have a lot of sidebars <laughs> what is the mind frame of say an indian family when it comes to money not education yeah money money yeah interesting because my mom is kiku i'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> match those mindsets yeah i don't know growing up we, we never really spent more than we could mm. i think that's the mindset that even right now yeah and those people, if I can't kuna pesa utaniambia, even if I have it, <laughs> I'm like... But is it something you're taught from a family perspective? In terms of practices. Okay. Because it's something you see a lot. So, for example, I... <laughs> my father had a club mm. when we were younger. Yeah. And guess who was the bouncer? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to sit until, I think, 1 p.m., 1 a.m., mm. 1 a.m. in the a.m., morning yeah. and ask full-grown people for their IDs mm. when I was like I think 14. What? And then whatever money I was getting from jam session mm. and anything else I, would, I could come up with, yeah. that was my pocket money ah. for school. So they sort of throw you in the Yeah, they are, they're like you do, like I was taught from an early age, you do the work. Mm. We will not let you die of hunger, <laughs> but we will watch you yeah. try and die of hunger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, but we will we will help so like for me it taught me I have to work for my money because mm, yeah. this if your jam session if I didn't come up with creative things yeah I even I even used to find the DJs myself for jam session mm. so if I don't make enough money I know that time in school 
Mimi and Kanti. <laughs> kuna, kuna hell. Kuna hell, yes. Yeah. So it's something you see in practice. Yeah. So someone like my father is very budget oriented. Mm. He does things in a... He can swing off budget once in a while. Yeah. But you have to pre-arrange things. And you will see me in my spending even yeah. now. Yeah. If by first, second... I don't know. You needed something. <laughs> we will wait for the next. The next one. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. that's what we call it in our house. Like, you <laughs> tango the next time. To Unless it's an emergency. So it's something you see in practice. Okay. It's something you see in practice. How to use money. Don't spend what you don't have. Mm. Plan for your money. Yeah. And just use it for necessary things. And you see, in Indian houses, we are not told don't have fun because we are there. <laughs> SI units, but plan for your fun. So yeah. you're, you're going to eat. Mm. Have you planned for it? We can go and use 15,000, but it was in it has budget. To be planned, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because the reason why I get this fascination is mm. because there's a shop in town where you buy like gadgets and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's an Indian family owned business. Mm. And I look at how they navigate. Like there's the grandpa, you can evidently tell the grandpa, the dads, the yeah. uncles, and then the little kids being. And then once in a while, when you're going to buy stuff and it's almost closing time, Mm -hmm. you see all of them getting into this not so fancy car, Uh, but you can obviously tell from the business they're doing, Mm -hmm. if they wanted a bigger car, they would have it. So it's Mm -hmm. just a thing of budgeting and... Budgeting and knowing what you want to spend Mm -hmm. your money on, because honestly, I can buy... Like my father drives a pro box, but he has... uh, a V8 in his parking lot. Mm-hmm. But like in Otamono, mm-hmm. Kutu, <laughs> Mabeba, <laughs> Sisters, like. Zacho, Sements. <laughs> yani gari yake, yeah. usipo ingia na, uke watu mena, unge ngara, unenda maali, mm. usip, usipande Usi gari yake, yeah. utatoka yeah. kamse, umetoka mtene. <laughs> so they don't, it's not about appearances, because mm-hmm. they know what they're about. Mm-hmm. Like, we know we are living a comfortable life. Yeah. If this car, this Maruti can carry the six of us. We are fine. I actually, the car they use is a Maruti. It's a Maruti, right? <laughs> I was sure. <laughs> so it's not about yeah. appearances. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, I think even our generation, that's where we go wrong, mm-hmm. appearances. Because yeah. you want to get something, probably a car that uses fuel more than 15 Gs a month. Mm-hmm. Mimi, you cannot convince me. <laughs> Catch me dead. You get... It doesn't make financial sense. It doesn't sense. make financial sense. Because at the end of the day, you move from one place to another. Mm-hmm. It's not about appearances. It's about your life. Yeah. You know? Just being honest. Because you see, even much. my younger brother right now, yeah. he works at my bigger brother's hardware. Mm. He's just learning. Yeah. Misumari, pipes, mm-hmm. nini, nini. So you see, my brother, there's no other if school fails, mm. he can open his hardware, he's good and move. Mm. Even even I have a brother who dropped out, I think, in form two. So yeah. he runs our uh, what do you call it? Uh, auto paint. Mm. I think he's richer than all of us combined. <laughs> so it's just it's not about appearances, it's about your business acumen, mm. it's about spending what you have and spending it well. And you budget for it. Yeah, business and lifestyle. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I think most of us, like you said, the youth, we are more into, okay, this sort of cliche, but mm-hmm. the Instagram lifestyle. Yeah. So I saw my friend at whatever restaurant. I mm-hmm. need to go to a better one so that they, I can show them that I'm also living. Yeah, I mean, go, why would I spend 1200 on breakfast? <laughs> like sausage in a 300, yeah. leopard here, 36. Mm. Brony, so my eye crate need to 50. That was Jeff Cattle fan. <laughs> okay, you get my point. Yeah. Like, in Dracula, in, I'm not saying be a cheapskate. Mm, I yeah. also, once in a while, will say, let me treat myself to breakfast. Yeah. But you have to have a goal. Mm. Like, last year, I, I personally lived on 2K per month. I don't know how, <laughs> but I did. Yeah. Because I wanted land mm. and I got it. So no one can take it away from me. Yeah. yeah. But the whole year, Elfumbili, Sebastian. Still I was living in Mombasa, so Mombasa is a bit cheaper. Yeah. Wait, Elfumbili, you can't see home like any. Kwa nani? Kwangu. If Elfumbili, <laughs> ni melipa rent, and you know nurses aren't paid that much in this country, so I used to pay my rent, um, probably my bills that I can't argue yeah. with anybody, then pay my shamba password. Mm. Kila itabake, we. <laughs> you know, balance. Tukatu. You know, you know, balance sheet. You know, you have to shift 15 days. It's a 15 days hospital. You provide lunch. Yeah, of course. So it's a 15 days. 
end of me. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. you see, at the end of the seven months, like, I can tell why I was living. Mm-hmm. You have something to point So out. you have to sacrifice. Nothing is easy. Mm. Especially about money. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to say no. I think it's a skill. Understanding money is a skill. And just like any other, you can learn it. But you also have to be willing to pay the price that yeah. comes with it. Even my friends call me CFO. So that should tell you. <laughs> you don't spend money baby when you're with me yeah okay mm-hmm. so how does your background do you have siblings you, yes. uh, you've mentioned a bigger mm. brother and a younger brother mm. uh, so looking at that perspective family and how you've been brought up what you've studied mm. how are the, uh, how are those elements playing into now your script writing and where do you see yourself in terms of obviously the script writer script that you want to yeah. yeah so my family have they our family is very one. I don't. I don't want to use the word dramatic, so mm. I'll use the word dynamic. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> so, you mentioned your dad was yeah. my pro box snake on us. You meet in that, and then so, you mentioned your brother has a hardware, yeah. and then your younger brother. So why are you not in the hardware business? I should have been. Now that I think <laughs> about it, I think I would. I have my Ford Ranger. I chose. <laughs> anyway, I think, as I said, for me, academics were like a solid part of me. Yeah. And then I always knew I was a creative. So I was offered that hardware, by the way, because mm. my father didn't see why I was being an ass. Mm. It didn't make sense to him. Now that I'm doing master's, is a bit... Okay, maybe. It's a <laughs> um, But I draw a lot of my scripts, even if it's a very small element mm. from my life. You will notice, someone who knows me mm. will tell you for sure. Yeah. That's that's a Safina thing. I don't. I try. I'm a very private person, by the way. So I try not to always reflect on my family a lot. Mm. But you will see it in my script. Did it make me a better scriptwriter? My family? No, not really. Mm. They are supportive, but I wouldn't say like I draw a lot from that. Yeah, they they are very supportive. Okay. But in terms of my writing, I'm more of a very observatory person. So I will sit somewhere and profile and make conclusions about people, mm-hmm. accurate or inaccurate. Yeah. But it will most probably inform <laughs> my next <laughs> true, script. True. Um, when I started script writing, I was doing it just for the sake, to be honest. I wasn't really serious about it. Mm. And earlier then, I was part of another group of creatives. Mm. And I think them, they're the ones who made me feel like I can write. Because I was like their primary writer. Okay. But then I concentrated on nursing for a very long time. Then when I was in Mombasa, then when I came to Nairobi... Actually, when I was in Mombasa, I did uh, uh, apply for Maisha Film Lab. Okay. And I got shortlisted. And I won it. Okay. Yeah, Congratulations. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, winning Maisha Film Lab for me, I think for me was my wake-up call. Because mm. it was 15 well-written script writers. People, you can see their work. Yeah. I mean, Coco to attack. Like, <laughs> but... But the fact that I won it for me was validation. And I think for me it was also like, Safina, you can actually, if you paid attention to it, because mm. it was a 10 day workshop. So you, whatever script you applied with, you work on it for the 10 days. So after ah, the you can't 10 days, it. so after 10 days, yeah, you can't switch it. Mm. So after the 10 days, you have mentors, you go changing your story. After 10 days, they decide who had the most growth, which story is shootable. Mm. And mine won. I was shocked. And but they shot it. Yes, they give you money, you shoot it. But their, their only condition is you direct it. Uh. So that's how now I started a bit of directing. It was so uncomfortable for me because I was so used to just writing. Yeah. So in terms of where I see myself, to be honest, in the last two years is when I feel like I'm more in my element in terms of writing. So I've become more confident, more bold about it. Yeah. I don't know if you guys... Uh, follow the we do theater Thursday mm-hmm. with with Brenda. Brenda I feel like I'm more. Oh, speaking of which, and then Brenda and Nick. Sometime some years was it we? I was an intern. Nick Mutuma or yes, Nick, Nick Mutuma. Mutuma, okay. Mutuma had a competition for romantic comedies. This was before my show, film lab. It okay. was online. You had to send a synopsis. Whoever gets public vote wins. Mm. I won that too. 
Nice. So <laughs> it is what is called disconnect. Mm. This one you don't have to put in, but <laughs> I'm not proud. Uh, they, my story changed a lot by the fact that I won it because mm. originally it was called Poker Face. Okay. I won that public opinion synopsis, Nini. I didn't get to go the whole whatever with them because mm. of industry. Yeah. Shenanigans. <laughs> this is a little bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah, and bureaucracy. But for me, even that was like, hmm, Safina, maybe that is something you should you look explore. into. Yeah. yeah. So where I see myself, to be honest, I like short films. Okay. I've noticed it is more of my style. And I want to do more stories that reflect on Kawaida Monanji. Okay. Um, and I also have an interest in merging history with the present. Mm -hmm. So where I see myself actually is I really want to write something for the Oscars. I know it's cliche. But I feel like I will win. You will. No, yeah. Mkumbuke <laughs> sitting. <laughs> <laughs> the day you win, we post this video. Yeah. Like so, um, why I see myself is doing more, being, and that's why I, I say I feel nice when people identify me as a writer. Finally, mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's a long time <laughs> coming. <Yeah. laughs> but um, I want to write more, and I don't want to tell you that I see myself writing this huge films in five years mm. no i want to build on it slowly yeah so when i win my oscar then you'll be like we can see where it came from True. so right now my concentration is putting more out, art out there okay and writing more and actually building a platform so like for theater thursday mm. Why we started with, with Brenda when it was quarantine. Yeah. And then I just hit her up. I was like, I have an idea. Let's, can I write you a perform? She was like, cool. <laughs> Did you guys know each other prior to that? Yeah, because of the romantic comedy. Ah, but we were not like at the that type. type. But yeah. she was like, you know what? I've seen your writing. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. So now it became a platform because we thought it was just me and her. So when we did it, it wasn't about anybody else. I was just writing to keep my writing, the writing part of my brain active. Mm. And she was just performing to keep her performance side <laughs> of the brain yeah. working. So the first time we posted, the first post, and people were interested in doing it, we were like... There could be something. There yeah. could be something. And so it's it made us want to create now a platform for upcoming actors and actresses because let me tell you in this country for you to be known yeah even like you see i watch theater thursday KE, and i'm like why is this one not <laughs> on a bigger screen yeah, yeah why am i watching her on my phone mm. <laughs> you get but phones are also big now no but we get my point yeah because i'm it. like um if it was not for theater thursday maybe we'll never find her mm. one and why is she not bigger? Because yeah. you can see, I'm not the, the talents like in the in Hollywood. You can see they never one if they repeat you as an act, as an actor, you're really big yeah. and you're really good. Yeah. Here we just <laughs> same people over same and people, over. and there's there's so much uh, people can give. Even see older people try mm -hmm. theater Thursday. I'm like, okay, not bad. You get yeah. so for for me, it's more of one creating a platform. And putting my art out there yeah. and maybe increasing the number of times i do films eventually that oscar yeah yeah so you talk about this theater thursday thing as mm -hmm. a platform mm -hmm. and as an entrepreneur i can't help but think mm -hmm. money money <laughs> money <laughs> so let's talk about the entrepreneurship side of mm -hmm. what you do yeah. which is script writing yeah. and these platforms that you're creating how and who is getting the money in, in their pockets? Who's getting the money in their pockets? How and who? Yeah. How and who? Because the who? there's a lot of uh, backlash that yeah. comes with just saying it's an exposure. You're just giving yeah, exposure. exposure. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of writing, and I'll be very brutally honest, in terms of writing and in Kenya, writing, mm. um, I wouldn't say you get paid per se. Mm -hmm. So normally what happens in my case, I sell my stories. Uh, then whatever you do with it, that's up to you. Up to you yeah. Um, 
So that's the model that works in Kenya. But you'll find in Kenya also, if you write, most probably you, you come as an investor in the film. Mm. So money will definitely come out yeah. <laughs> of your pockets. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's where the industry is at. Mm -hmm. Except for the shows that are maybe on MTV and uh, what do you call this? The one Amnet. from Africa, Amnet, mm. the local ones Maisha. like Mother in Law Maisha. Yeah. Those ones would say the script writers are paid per script. Okay. Okay. But they are big part of a bigger organizations. For people who are doing film one out of pocket, I would call it out of pocket, mm. like myself, most probably will come as a writer, as an investor in the whole. So your money will only come from maybe screenings festivals mm. and awards if you get any yeah so most money for big projects will probably be handled by producers and such so you'll be paid as a percentage if you're an investor or you're paid one off which personally i prefer because i'm a bit touchy about people distorting my story <laughs> so i'd rather you pay me a go <laughs> what happens in a situation where yeah. um like the Lion King thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same story reproduced over and over. Do you get paid for every time it's reproduced? It depends on your contract. And okay. you see that's where intellectual, um, the laws on intellectual property, property comes yeah. in, which in Kenya isn't also very defined. defined. Yeah. It's true. And not very many writers are are aware of it. So I'll mm. give you an example. Like this story, was it Selena? Mm -hmm. Selena is originally written by Indian dude. Okay. Oh, the one on Citizen. Yes, it's yeah. not a Kenyan writer. Okay. So what writers on that other side do is they sell the format of a story. Mm. All right. So you can come and customize it to your country. Yeah. But you'll be paid each time it is. Yeah. It is it is oh, reproduced. Okay. Mm. Okay. So depending on your initial contract, so you can say I want ten percent each time you redo the story yeah. which will be what lion king and the rest do and okay. for them it's bigger percentages somewhere like kenya as i said it's mostly one off you're mm. paid for whatever script you write so if i was to write for tahidi hai one episode yeah they pay you for that one yeah episode. it's probably like, i think 30k last time i checked so they pay you for that episode okay yeah so since the money is very <laughs> shaky yeah. and in a murky space, mm. we can can we say that then money is not the motivation for you doing this? Absolutely not. So if you're not <laughs> looking to Make money. pursue nursing full time mm. and scripting is not very lucrative, mm -hmm. what is the plan? Because now I'm, I'm sort of lost. What is the plan? My plan or general plan? The plan. <laughs> <laughs> Your plan in My terms plan of money. Because in terms of money. Because I, I feel like when money is mentioned, mm. uh, first of all, it's a very touchy conversation topic. It is? It is for mm. most people. Oh, okay. And mm. in as much as people say, I, I'm only doing this for passion. Mm. At the end of the day, you have utilities, you have to take care of, yeah. you, ha you need your 2K per month need to mm. buy the land <laughs> so <laughs> how do you strike oh, that balance? <laughs> how do you strike oh, that balance so my my ulti ultimate plan to be honest would be a full-time filmmaker okay but the reality on the ground is i can't support it right now mm -hmm. it can't support you right now for me okay it can there are people who do it full-time yeah but i'm not in that headspace okay so as you said i can juggle so Mimi, I'm, I'm all about comfort. Mm -hmm. So since I have a part of me that can support this other part of me, yeah. I am cool okay. for now. Yeah. Uh, but you'll realize, I don't believe that you have to be either or. Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't have to I be had either. that with someone else. Yeah, I don't believe you have to be either a nurse or a no, writer. A script writer, yeah. I can be both. They're called polymaths. You can do multiple things. Yes, I can do multiple things. So I don't believe like I have to choose. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's something I've never really chosen. I can write at night and nurse during the day. Yeah. That's fine. My Although my ultimate goal in scripting would be probably um, have like a scripting school. Because scripting in Kenya is not very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a bit mediocre, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, but I'm not saying this like from a pedestal. Even me, I write mediocre things sometimes. I'm like, 
but <laughs> those ones you don't see. Yeah. Um, but my ultimate goal would be a probably a well a well thought of production house that has that we give you writing, we give you storyboarding, we give you the actual producing and the actual shooting and equipment. Is that like an an incubator or? No, we can do incubation. Like as a business, I would want if you come in with whatever idea you want, mm. like as Sebastian, and you want a film on insects. Yeah. We'll give you an animator, we'll give you a writer, we'll give you a storyboarder, we'll give you a set designer. Okay. It's like a one-stop shop for all your film needs. Mm. If you want a music video, we'll give you a videographer, yeah. a director. A DOP. Yeah, a DOP. Yeah. That will be my ultimate goal. But okay. not for today. I feel like I have to build on my art because I wouldn't want to also um, pass on mediocre skills mm. to people. So for me, I would want to you can eat a top script right I don't cringe <laughs> after that yeah. then maybe I can now give back okay yeah is it really necessary to give back oh yes absolutely from where I am I come from okay. it is important because is that where you come from you do you mean Mombasa or from an no, Indian my family? Liban. <laughs> Mombasa really Mombasa <laughs> I went for like three four years okay. but where I come from is where my upbringing okay yeah, giving back for me is absolutely Important. like what's the point then? Because yeah. I can I can sit here and write and then die and then what? So yeah, giving back is for me. I always even if before I get into something, I usually look at what is your giving back mm -hmm. uh, policy or yeah. your CSR. Yeah. yeah. So I'm all about that because I feel like pe more people need uplifting even if you're not like where you think you should be mm, you're mm. probably higher than someone who could yeah definitely yeah so definitely. giving back for me is absolutely important okay what is the one question you would want me to ask you how much money do i want <laughs> 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 okay how much money do you want right now 10 billion. 10 billion. Just 10. It's interesting that you're talking about <laughs> money. <laughs> the other day, mm -hmm. I sometimes read. I opened a book, mm -hmm. an old book. Okay, a book I had gotten. I hadn't really gotten into reading it. Mm -hmm. And when I opened it, I realized I had read, I think, a chapter. Mm -hmm. And an old 1,000 shillings note fell out. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking, how do I make a multiple of it? As it is, it's useless because mm -hmm. it's just paper now. Yeah. But now, how do I retain its value and then multiply by itself? Mm -hmm. What did you answer yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have the, I don't have the answer yet, so maybe. Hmm. What is value to you, though? No, it it was a thousand shillings. Yeah, you see the way when you say increase value, you see how I increase value. My interpretation of value mm. is different. Yeah. Maybe value for you is you can use it. Mm. Value for me is totally different. It's, I would like to get what my you, my yeah. of value because as it is, uh -huh. you see these motivational speakers that come and take a thousand shillings note and then they crumble it up and then they throw it and then they step on it. They do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, you see this uh, piece of paper? It was a thousand shillings. Uh -huh. Stepping on it and throwing it down didn't make it lose any value, blah, blah, blah. But now That's they can't it. do that with that yeah. because it's an, uh, it's an old yes. thousand kind of shillings. Yeah. But I want to re reclaim its value and then multiply it by itself. How do I do that? Frame it and put it in an art studio. Okay. And then how do I get it to a million bob? To a million bob. Mm. So you make your, your whatever, your art studio very avant-garde. At the end of the day, you see like, what do you call this? Is it dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. Fossils. Fossils? <laughs> yes, fossils. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> okay. What's the value in fossils? I think it's just the sentimental exactly. aspect of it. Exactly. So frame the 1,000 one note and, and put it somewhere. People can see it in like whatever years. They can pay and come see it. Okay. Yeah. So obviously, time will play a role in it. Time plays a role in everything. There's nothing microwaving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't know microwave. Ukule. 
Is it so pico evil? Ah. Mm, you put them in a whatever and then like imagine and then you microwave for five minutes. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I feel like we're I ate it for seven months. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like I'm digressing. But you get my point. Yeah, I get yeah. it. So it's the sentimental aspect of it that will give it value. And I think also when you go back to storytelling, mm-hmm. there are stories that are not necessarily great. Yeah. But since they've been retold over and over, we tend to identify with them. Mm-hmm. As we finish up, what was the one thing you would tell an aspiring scriptwriter? <laughs> Mr. David here. You are an aspiring <laughs> right? <laughs> Answer a word. Uh, Imagine just stay true to yourself. Why I say this is when I was writing Broken, mm. which was the Maisha one. Yeah. Um, my directing mentor was Judy Kibinge, mm-hmm. the Oscar one. Yeah. See, see my my circles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Oscar, Oscar is coming. <laughs> Anyway, and then there was a scene where someone kept opening the fridge and re- and closing it. Mm. She couldn't get it. She was like, Safina, get that scene out of that script. I'm like, no, I will not get it out of my <laughs> We argued. I remember it was a whole night of back and forth. Safina just removed that fridge scene. It doesn't mm. work. I'm like, in my head, it, it makes sense. Yeah. So obviously it was my script. It stayed. Mm. And it's the one thing that stood out to f- for very many people, including my mother. Yeah. Because they could identify with what I was. Maybe Judy couldn't. Because mm. it wasn't from... She couldn't identify with what I was trying to say. What were you trying to say? Have you watched Broken? Sebastian. I have watched the <laughs> other one. <laughs> I have watched the first so line. anyway, mm. go watch it. And then it's I can only ask. 15 minutes. Okay. I'm going to watch of it your this life. Now. Eh? I'm gonna yeah, watch, watch it. it. Yeah. Then ask me that question. I would really want to he- to see what you think also. So okay, why tell you what I thought? Hello, but hello, what I would tell a scriptwriter is right. And sometimes your writing doesn't have to make sense. Mm. What what I learned very early when I was script writing is you have to learn, you have to learn the rules first, so you're able to break them. Mm. So mm. my my script writing doesn't follow any. I know the basics of script writing. But each time I write, I challenge myself to break a rule and still give the story. Mm. So keep writing. You have to know the normal for you to... And that's a very medicine thing to say. <laughs> you have to know the normal to know the abnormal. Yeah. So that's what I would tell her upcoming writer. And don't stop. Write for yourself. Write for whoever. Mm. Cre- in, an, in Kenya, you have to make your own tables, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No one, no one, absolutely no one will come and tell you now... David, we are making a film. <laughs> Come we right. want you to write. No, Come right. Run and write. No, no, no. <laughs> you have. I've lunch. I have. Even Theatre Thursday for me was me making the my table. own table. Yeah. Like Nilichukua Mbao. Kapigia brother. Come on, Sumari size. You see, so yeah. you have to make your own tables, and that's why I think I'm also going more into directing because mm. you notice most of my films I write and direct. Yeah except when I don't feel like, but that's part of making your own table because okay. you can shoot a film anywhere, really. Mm-hmm. And the more films I see, you know, you'll see, you'll see David written by David, written by David, written yeah. by David. Absolutely. Then one day the right tables will notice your small table. And like, come join us. Yeah, nah. let's join. No, don't join them. Just pull your table. <laughs> pull it closer. <laughs> so pull it's your slower. table closer. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of tables, I want to thank you for agreeing to come to ours. <laughs> and uh, we hope that we're going to see more and more scripts, okay. movies, films. And then when you finally win the Oscar, we pray that we're going to still be here to cheer yeah. you on. And then after the Oscars, we wait for the Tonys and then to Kendalea. Where do guys get you? Social media. I'm going to talk to food. At mostly Safina. Everywhere. At, at Safina. At mostly Safina. Oh, mostly Safina. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, it's a wrap. My name is Sebastian. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to talk to Safina. At mostly Safina. I'm funny. I'm funny. I'm hilarious. <laughs>